Howdy folks, and welcome to Armored Warfare with the Mighty Jingles, my first real gameplay video of Armored Warfare, as I'm sitting around basically waiting for Star Wars Battlefront to be released, hopefully at the stroke of midnight tonight, or by the time you see this video, last night. And I thought to myself, oh, actually, yes, Armored Warfare. My base is coming along quite nicely, as you can see here. I've maxed out my barracks, and that increases the amount of experience earned by all of my tank crews, which is nice. I'm currently in the process of maxing out my academy, which will also increase the amount of commander experience that I earn. Everything else is either rank 1 or rank 2. The airport at level 2 reduces my equipment costs by 4%. Similarly, my level 2 garage reduces my repair costs by 4%. My level 2 helipad increases all currency earned by 2%. My recon post, also level 2, reduces the cost of premium account time. And my command center, which is only level 1, increases the amount of free experience that I earn. So the base is coming along quite nicely. And while I'm busy upgrading my base and doing my daily login and collecting my resources, I realize that I'm very, very close to unlocking my first tier 5 main battle tank, the T-72. And also very, very close to unlocking the Chieftain. Now, the way you go about unlocking these things is different. Unlocking the T-72 is fairly straightforward and works in exactly the same way that you'd be used to from games like World of Tanks. You simply play its predecessor, in this case the T-64, until you've earned enough reputation or experience. Reach the magic number, unlock the tank, buy it, and there it is in your garage. But unlocking the Chieftain Mark V, this is where Armored Warfare gets a bit different. In order to unlock this block of Western European main battle tanks, you have to drive this particular dealer's main battle tanks and block a certain number of damage with your armor. The number that you have to reach is different depending on whether you're playing PvP or PvE mode. The number is significantly less if you're playing in PvP mode, but in PvE, which is pretty much how I play Armored Warfare, I'm very very close to unlocking the Chieftain as well, so maybe I can kill two birds with one stone. So I load up the T-64 and immediately get a map that I've never seen before. And there's a chieftain on my team. Oh, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? It's just such a brute of a tank. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. And then, of course, the challenger, which follows on from the chieftain. So, um, I have no idea where we're going or what we're doing. But the good thing is that in PvE mode, there's a big cross on the map that tells you where you're supposed to be heading. Obviously, my T-64 is fully upgraded. And it's a pretty good tank. It's a tier 4, and when you're at this kind of level, I mean, at lower levels in Armored Warfare, you can pretty much just get away with firing high explosive anti-tank ammunition and absolutely everything. Nobody has composite armor, nobody has explosive reactive armor plating, nobody has the kind of defense systems that can resist high explosive anti-tank ammo. However, at tier 4, you start coming across tanks like that. BMPT Terminator, it's covered in composite armor and it's got explosive reactive armor plates. My heat ammo is just not going to do anything. Even my APCR, if it hits an ERA plate, is unlikely to do any damage. So instead, I shoot at the BMD because I know I can penetrate and damage it. If your heat ammo can penetrate, fire heat because it's going to do more damage than armor piercing. There's, there's nothing explosive in an armor piercing shell, for example. It's just a solid kinetic penetrator, which is what gives it its high penetration values. But if it's going to have too much penetration, you're not going to do the full range of damage against machines like BMP3s and BMD1s. Now, when it comes to crew skills that increase the rate at which you reload and swap between different ammunition types, again, at tier 1, 2, and 3, it's really not that important. You just fire, if you have access to it, high explosive anti-tank ammunition and everything. But here, I really need to be shooting something other than heat at that M2 Bradley because he's got explosive reactive armor plating around his turret. So I swap to APCR and what do you know? <laughs> Targets suddenly start popping up for which APCR ammunition just has too much penetration. Bloody typical. So I switch to high explosive to deal with that weasel. Ah, great, weasel's disappeared. Will HE do some damage here? Oh, it did! It actually penetrated the side and did maximum damage, 411, so that's really, really good news. Firing HE in Armored Warfare can be a bit of a lottery. I've had a number of occasions where I've been shooting at machines with some of the thinnest armor in the game with high explosive ammunition and it just doesn't penetrate, in which case I would have been better off over-penetrating with an APCR shot. 
Anyway, we've successfully defended the first point, and now it's time to move on, and that, of course, is when I run into the biggest, baddest piece of shrubbery in the entire world. What the actual fuck <laughs> is going on here? The chieftain can't believe what he's seeing. He's laughing his ass off at me. Which is only fair, I suppose. So, yeah. They haven't quite worked all the bugs out of Armored Warfare just yet. And we're going to see another one real soon. Anyway, moving along swiftly. Remember, I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone in this medium difficulty. Because you can't unlock hard difficulty PvE missions until you possess a tier 5 or higher machine. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to unlock the T-72 by just earning as much reputation or experience as possible in this game, in the T-64, and also in order to unlock Marat Shishkin's Western European main battle tanks, beginning with the Mark V Chieftain, I have to bounce as much damage as humanly possible while driving his tanks. And of course, the T-64 is one of those tanks. So I'm in the unenviable position of actually wanting to get shot at, and I'm going to get my wish. Arrived at the second zone, target spotted, heat loaded, no problem, and yeah, here we go, come on, shoot me some more, come on bitches, I can take it, fantastic. Good, good solid hit there with high explosive anti-tank, right through the turret of that guy, and he's just blazing away at me, and he can't pen it, oh crap, target spotted, off, oh this isn't good. I mean, I, I do want them to shoot at me, but I'd rather they shot into the front of the tank if at all possible, because that's where all the armour is on a main battle tank. But these guys have been occupied by a friendly, off in that direction, who is going to need the fire support, and yeah, no problem. Oh, wow. Okay, I took a minor high explosive hit, but it has damaged my tracks there from that scorpion. And now they're starting to penetrate. Oh, I don't like this anymore. I'm trying to find somewhere... Yeah, g again, good damage. As long as I can see the side of this guy, I don't have to switch to APCR ammunition. Am I going to reload before he does? I am. Okay, so there's another kill. Now, once again, I can point the front of my tank towards these guys. And... Oh, buggeration, there's somebody on my left flank. Expeditionary tank has an unmanned turret. So rather than shooting at the unmanned turret, because that won't do as much damage, because there's nobody in it, shoot at the hull of the vehicle wherever possible. Gonna get the kill here. Lovely jubbly. But I'm starting to run very, very low on high explosive anti-tank ammunition. When you're playing in PvE mode, there is a consumable that you can use, which replenishes all of your ammunition and a percentage of your hit points. I seem to have found another actually I seem to have found another two bugs. What the hell is that tree doing? I <laughs> mean It's like I'm playing War Thunder all of a sudden. But more importantly, where the hell has my ammo gone? The consumable is supposed to replenish my ammunition, not remove it all. What? Well, actually, the bug is slightly more complicated than it first appears. It hasn't removed all of my ammunition. It has actually replenished it. It's just an interface bug. It's telling me I have no ammo, but my gun is actually loaded, and all of my ammo has been restocked. But I've never seen this bug before, so I don't know that. Um, in fact, I've never seen the rolling tree bug before, and I've never seen the world's hardest bush bug before, so I'm doing pretty well in this match. Three bugs for the price of one game. So I'm feeling a little disheartened here, but I can still unlock the Chieftain. All I have to do is just use myself as a meat shield for the other tanks on my team. Oh, hang on a minute. Um, <laughs> oh, my ammo came back. Hooray! Um, all right. It was just actually an interface bug. It's the first time I've ever seen it happen, but apparently sometimes if you use the replenishment consumable, which is only available in PvE missions, you can't use it against other players, it does restock all of your ammunition, it does replenish some of the hit points of your tank, but it bugs the ammunition interface into thinking that you actually have no ammunition loaded. You do have a shot in the shell of your gun, and all of the ammo is there. But you can quite easily, as I did, and it was only because I just thought, oh, screw it. And I'm just, I don't even know why I pressed the trigger and cleared the barrel of the ammunition that was loaded, but it suddenly refreshed my ammunition display and showed me that I did actually have a full load of ammunition in the tank, so hooray. I can actually play a further role in this mission other than just being an extra few thousand millimetres of frontal armour for the Mark V. Cheating on my team, you know, so that's nice. So, I'm quite happy, and right now I'm pretty much just playing follow the leader, because I've never played this map before, it's the first time I've seen it. You'll note that it's 
There's a lot of concealment on this map, which is going to be great news for people in armoured fighting vehicles and scouts, but I have absolutely no idea why we're heading in that direction. Because the cross... Oh, hang on, it's moved. All right, so these guys have obviously played this map before. <laughs> I haven't. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. I thought we were heading for one of the optional objectives. But the next zone to defend has just popped up right here. So it's, it's a good job that the rest of the team knew what they were doing, because I didn't. Now, when you've been playing these PvE missions for a while, you get to know from which direction and in what location the enemy tanks are going to spawn. So I've got a 50-50 chance of having my tank pointed in the right direction, because I've never played this map before. And so, of course, I am pointing in completely the wrong direction when the enemies all pop up behind us. But then again, this chieftain is kind of looking the same direction as me. Maybe there's... no? No, he's turning around. Oh, OK. OK, so he's new here as well. Oh, crap, no, there are enemy tanks spawning from this direction, and I have been spotted. OK, well, time to put the gun to work. Good solid hit. And that BMP starts returning fire, but I can easily take the shots from the BMP on the turret. So, yep, this is all good stuff. I'm adding towards that damage blocked by my armour. Unfortunately, a T-64, I'm not going to penetrate the front of him with high explosive anti-tank ammo. Hopefully, uh, he's going to give me the side of the tank. Come on. Is he? Oh, actually, I have slightly more immediate problems. <laughs> that is a lot of enemy tanks. Uh, there's just me and the chieftain here. Everybody else is occupied with tanks uh, on the other side. So, okay, switching to APCR this time. Now, even shooting APCR into the side of these machines, because they tend to have composite and explosive reactive armor plating on the side, the APCR is the best ammunition choice to use. Sometimes it is going to over-penetrate. But if it hits those ERA plates, there's a chance that the APCR will still do some damage. It'll go right through. Whereas an ERA plate is going to completely neutralise the effect of a high explosive anti-tank round. Oh, this is not good. Stingray. Light tank. He's got a very, very nasty gun. But I've managed to damage his ammo rack. So he's probably not going to get another shot off. And even if he does, he did. But I took it on the armour. This is all good stuff. The Chieftain finishes him off. I've actually bounced quite a lot of uh, damage in this match from the front of the T-64. Oh, fresh target. I'm queuing... The high explosive anti tank ammunition, once I've cleared the breach of the APCR that was loaded. Hopefully, it's going to be the right choice. Can I get a shot in on this guy? I can. There's another kill. Fantastic stuff. And suddenly, it's all gone pretty quiet. It looks like we've dealt with. Actually, yeah, there's a. Got him. There's another kill. This is all good news. I think. There's definitely one other enemy tank up here. So let's go and find him. He's still there on the map. The, you can see that the map in Armored Warfare incorporates a lot of the features that you get in XVM, in World of Tanks. Uh, and which were recently incorporated into the UI of World of Tanks. Last known position of enemy vehicles, for example. Come on, start shooting me. I don't care. You're not going to penetrate my frontal armor. One shot in. It's a good job I used that consumable to replenish my ammunition, even though it bugged out, because otherwise I would have been firing APCR or high explosive at these guys. So... 12,000 credits that costs, by the way. Mid-tier ammunition and health consumable. Only available in PvE missions. Well worth the money. And that is pretty much it. We have successfully beaten back the attack from two separate directions. Just myself and the Mark V Chieftain over here. With the rest of the team fighting off the other side of the map. And that was a successful mission. Uh, on a brand new map with some very, very amusing bugs. And the first time I've... Oh, 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 the, the world's second hardest bush. Hooray! <laughs> Armoured Warfare. Why you do this? So anyway, did I unlock the T-72 and the Chieftain? Oh, hang on a minute. What the hell's that? Oh, it's called... I've never seen that award before. The most assists. You need a minimum of 15 assists to qualify for that one. That's the first time I've ever earned that particular medal. There's the blue star. I've seen that one a few times for earning the most experience uh, on the team. Which is nice. Not bad, considering I thought I'd run out of ammunition halfway into the battle. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's have a quick look at the stats. The one thing that it, it, you get a wealth of information when you look at the stats here in the post battle results screen on the warfare, but the one thing that I haven't actually been able to find, maybe I'm just blind, is how much damage you've bounced from the armor of your tank. So I don't actually know at this point 
whether or not I've unlocked the Chieftain. But I have unlocked the T-72. So, hooray! My first proper Tier 5 main battle tank. But, did I also bounce enough damage to push me over the magic number required to unlock Marat Shishkin's Western European main battle tanks, starting with the Chieftain at Tier 5? That's a yes, by the way. <laughs> you know, in case it wasn't immediately obvious. I'm happy now. I've unlocked the Chieftain. It might be stock, it might not have the Stillbrew armour package, it might have a terrible, terrible engine. Uh, it might only, at least at first, have Hesh and armour-piercing ammunition, but I don't care, because the Chieftain is the reason why I play Armoured Warfare. In fact, I got so excited about unlocking the Chieftain, I immediately ran through to tell Rita all about it, and she said, yeah, I've had the Chieftain for ages. Like, Excuse me? Yeah, that's right, Obsidian unlocked all the tanks for me. They did what? I don't like her anymore. <laughs> well, my chieftain's worth more because I earned it the proper way, didn't just get it given to me. I do love this tank, by the way. It was an absolutely amazing machine, as long as it didn't have to go anywhere. <laughs> because the Leyland L60 engine was a disaster, but the gun was absolutely phenomenal. And now, it's all mine. And I'm sure I'm going to be having fun with this in Armored Warfare in the future. That's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.